Mm. <sighs> this shit here. I love my keto coffee, man. My keto bomb, my coffee creamer, my heavy cream, some whipped cream on top of it with a little cinnamon. It is the perfect way to start my day. Well, that and waking up next to my bride of 21 years. People always ask me, how are you doing today? And if I got my keto coffee and I wake up next to my wife and I can get out of bed and come in and talk about the Dallas Cowboys, it is a great day. I can handle everything else from there. That's mm, where we are. Um, unfortunately, we've gotten a taste of football. Just a taste of the NFL season coming up. We got the OTAs that, that happen, you know, and, and things, and they get out on the field. And then you have the mini camp, and then you hear, get a little taste about how the quarterbacks are going. You know, we hear that 95% uh, of the Eagles' playbook is new. I don't know why they kept 5%. I, I don't know. What, what's the 5% that they kept? I don't, I, the tush bush? Is that, is that all they kept out of it? I don't know. What is the 5%? That's the question. What did they keep out of the 5%? And that um, Kenny Pickett seems to be picking it up quicker than Jalen Hurts, who's on the hot seat with this coach. And then you hear that Daniel Jones, that, that Drew Locke is looking pretty, pretty good over there. And, of course, we have the same thing that we are dealing with. You know, you may not like the Cowboys. You may hate the Cowboys. But you have to understand, the Cowboys constantly run the conversation. Because, you know, we got Dak Prescott, who is, you know, on the last year of his deal. But you got other quarterbacks that are working on their deals, too. You know, two is working on his. They're working on Trevor Lawrence's and things. You know, Dak Prescott, you know, even though his contract number is $55 million, Nobody's talking about Deshaun Watson, who's $63 million. Not just this year, but the next year and the year after. Kind of funny how they're not talking about that hamper him. We've heard about the Cowboys, you know, that they're going to be bad. Some people said, you know, they could be third in the division and things, that they haven't done anything to fix their team, to make them better, that they lost talent. And then all of a sudden now it's, well, they actually have a lot of young players and they actually are one of the, the more talented teams, you know, and here it is, Dak Prescott, he's a choker, he sucks, he stinks. And now all of a sudden you're hearing people that are saying he's the top rated quarterback in the NFC. I don't know what it is, but the Cowboys, they drive the conversation. So I want to take you back about two months ago. Jerry Jones' definition of all-in may be different from some Cowboys' definition of all-in, all or maybe Cowboys fans, I should say, but a couple of moves came out of Dallas over the weekend. Linebacker Leighton Vander Esch retired. They also released wide receiver Michael Gallup. Now all eyes turn to Dak and his contract. Hmm. So, Adam, what more can you tell us about his situation? Well, Laura, as Field Yates reported today, he's reworked his contract, but it's a situation where he still has not gotten the long-term extension, and he's still sitting on the Cowboys' books for over $55.5 million, so it's still a big number. And the fact of the matter is that is really stifling to their salary cap, and Jerry Jones says they're all in, but the fact of the matter is basically they can't do a lot because of that number, and they're in a situation where after this year, Dak Prescott can become a free agent, he can't be tagged, he can't be traded. So this becomes a real quandary that's only going to grow in stature as time goes on. Yeah, reallocating $4 million of the $59 million that they're dealing with there. I Mina, mean, what do you think about the Cowboys not committing to a long-term deal with Dak? It has to say something, right? Yeah, uh, we'll see. There's still time left. Um, I just can't help but marvel at how much leverage Dak Prescott has. Like, we Ooh. talk a lot about... Kirk Cousins hmm. being a legend at the bank because of the way, you know, he played things out with the tag and then getting those guaranteed deals. Dak Prescott has followed a, a fairly similar, not exactly the same playbook. Because think about this, Laura. Kirk Cousins this year signed a contract as a, as a true free agent for four years, $180 million. If Dak Prescott had been a free agent this offseason, $50 million a year, easily. If he's hmm. a free agent next year, I can only imagine the kind of money he were to get if he were to play next year at the same level he played at during... Uh, the regular season, I realize mm -hmm. that's an operative word, that phrase there, uh, this mm -hmm. year. Um, and to that end, 
there's no reason why he should take any sort of discount from the Dallas Cowboys, especially given, as you guys laid out, his contract uh, does, and the current cap hit, does prevent them from doing certain signings and, and spending their money. Uh, from Dallas Which they never do. I'll say this. The likelihood that they would move on from Dak Prescott and improve at the quarterback position is very, very low. Coming mm. off of this show where we're talking about how desperate Minnesota is now and the kind of trades they'd be making, and it's still just a shot in the dark in the draft. We'll leave that there. But then, here we are two months later after the draft, and we get this. Hey, Jamie, let's be very clear about hometown discounts as they pertain to Dak Prescott. There's not a player in football with more leverage right now than Dak Prescott. He's headed into the last year of his contract. Right. He can't be traded. He can't be tagged. He would be out of his mind to give any type of discount when he is in the position to reset the quarterback's right. market after the season if Dallas doesn't have a deal done with him. There's no player in football with more leverage than Dak Prescott, and I would expect him to use it like a hammer, despite the fact that he'd like to stay with the hometown Cowboys. Yeah, listen, no rush for Dak Prescott. Just sit back and wait <laughs> and let those dollars go up and up. Yeah, let those dollars go up and up. You know, you may not like it, but here's the reality is, unfortunately, the floor has been raised. And here's the thing I've been trying to point out to people. See, people don't seem to understand this, is... You're thinking about Joe Burrow, it's $55 million, okay? There's a thing called math. I know most of you guys don't do math anymore. Uh, they just don't, okay? You know, back in my day, when believe it or not, when we were in elementary school and, and junior high, you weren't allowed to use a calculator. You had to literally show your work. Yes, and most of y'all can't put, a, put count two and two. Add two and two together without uh, using your phone. If you go through and look at the percentages of what Joe Burrow's contract when he signed his $55 million last year versus the value of the salary cap as it was then, those same dollars this year because of the inflated salary cap $60 million is the same as $55 million. Let me try and say that one more time. $65 million is the same as fifty-five. In the same way that when Dak Prescott signed his deal and got $40 million a year, it's basically the same as that $40 million a year. And I know you're like, what, what kind of fool's magic are you doing? 40 is not the same as 60 No, but percentage-wise of how much it's costing you for your quarterback. It is the same. It's in the same range. And you're going to see Tua probably get 53, 54. You're going to see Trevor Lawrence probably get 52, 53. You're going to see everybody is going to be in the 50 million range where we're going to be at a point that we're going to look at this and say, Kirk Cousins' deal that he just signed with Atlanta is actually a bargain. And here's the thing that's going to be even funnier, because what happens as other guys get paid, understand that the time that Justin Jefferson just got paid, you immediately heard Tariq Hill like, oh, I got to get on the phone with my agent, because he's like, I want to raise. And you're going to see Devontae Smith is not going to be happy with $25 million for very long. In the same way, Zach Martin held out because a couple years after signing his deal, he looked at that and said, you know, I am one of the best, if not the best, guard in football. Right now, I'm getting paid like the ninth best. I want some more money. And that drug on into training camp. Now, let's hope that the Cowboys don't drag on with CeeDee Lamb into training camp. At least their quarterback is showing up to do what he does. And as he puts it, he's gambling on himself. He's all in on Dak Prescott. And it's not the first time that he's gambled on himself. I think he thrives in that situation. And here's what would be crazy, because, again, you, you, you have to. I'm sorry. Those who think 
I keep getting all these people that keep saying, you just aren't coming to the realization that this is Dak Prescott's last year. You're going to cry when they let him go. Well, I can tell you what Dak Prescott's plans are. I guarantee you that he's eyeing that 4,000, about 4,300 yards, 4,500 yards to being the Dallas Cowboys record holder in yardage. And I believe it's 41 TDs. I got to double check, but I think it's 41 TDs um, to end up having both of those records. If Dak Prescott has a Dallas Cowboys all-time record in either of those categories and the team does well, there's no way in hell that the Cowboys can just say, we're done. See you. Peace out. Go someplace else. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. And another one of those reasons is, one, you'd look completely insane because I don't know that anybody would have had, you know, an MVP candidate, three of, uh, of possibly three of, of uh, four years, and say, no, we're good. We're going to let them go. Um, although the Cowboys do do things differently than everybody else. The other part of the equation is you got the $40 million cap hit if he's not here. They get the deal done, and I believe what they're looking at is saying, we're going to take the $55 million on the, the this year. We're going to eat that. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll spread out the 40 along with the new deal and do something similar to, say, um, Joe Burrow, where we kind of have a lower number the first couple of years to get us some space to get Micah in there and CD. You don't let generational talented players out the door. Contrary to popular belief. So, one more rehash of this. Sports, NFL, college football, and why are they dena- the delaying the football podcast? All right, a couple of things it's to not talk about. Going to save here. anything at this point. I want to talk about Larry Allen, former teammate of yours, and uh, I also want to talk about what's going on with the wide receivers right now because Justin Jefferson got paid, CD Lamb's not at training camp, and I'm thinking. He kind of knows what his window is here. At least Jerry Jones would know. Shouldn't that deal get done if they do want to pay CeeDee Lamb? Dan, I'm at a loss for what the Dallas Cowboys are doing from a contract standpoint. I I really don't understand it. You know, as you know, I do the Eagles preseason games, and the Eagles' philosophy is as soon as you identify a player – as being a core player that you want to have around for a long time, sign him and extend him then because the price is only going to go up. Meanwhile, Dan, the Cowboys' three best, most important players right now, Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons, all have contract issues. None of them are happy with their contractual situations. I've heard where Jerry Jones has said he wants – a few more hands to be played, which I think is insulting. I mean, on the one hand, you can say, what, he wants to see how Dak or CeeDee Lamb or Micah Parsons plays. Maybe there's a chance they could suffer some type of catastrophic injury. But when I hear Jerry Jones say he wants to see some more hands be played before he gives them the big contracts, two thoughts. One is I think it's really insulting to those guys. I mean, you're CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons, Dak Prescott, and Jerry Jones hasn't seen enough to this point, to identify you as the guy he wants to have around. And then the other thing is that the reason why the Cowboys are in this position and will continue to be in this position, they're going to have to pay all three of those guys now at the top of the market. Micah Parsons isn't taking less. He already said it. He wants to be the highest paid non-quarterback. CeeDee Lamb, I'm sure, thinks he's as good as Jefferson and will get that money. And Dak has crazy leverage over them because of his salary cap number. As you know, Dan, it's the most well-endowed, it's the most valuable franchise in all of pro sports. Mm -hmm. They could easily a year ago, have given these guys huge signing bonuses, spread it out to get that salary cap proration. I really really don't understand it at all. Yeah, unless he's – Jerry is kind of betting on one of those guys is not going to live up 
to expectations this upcoming. Like, it's just weird. You're almost hoping they don't uh, outperform what their contract is going to call for, which is crazy. You want Micah Parsons to be Defensive Player of the Year. You want CeeDee Lamb to have 120 catches and 12 touchdowns. And you want Dak to be in the MVP race. That's going to cost you even more because you're on the clock. So it's almost as if Jerry's saying, well, what if they underachieve? Maybe I don't have to pay them as much. Or I let one of them walk. Uh, that's not going to happen. You know, and, and the thing that, to your point, which I think is really interesting, is that I, I guess I sit here sometimes and I think, do they just want to pay him as late as possible? It, it, is it just a cash thing? Because you're right. It's almost on some level like, they're rooting for that to happen. I don't think that that's the case. You're delaying the I, inevitable, it feels I, like. A thousand percent. And I think, Dan, that Jerry Jones wants these players and their agents to give a discount because they play for the Cowboys, meaning all of the primetime games, all of the off-the-field opportunities. You see Dak on all these commercials. Micah's got all this stuff going with Bleacher Report and all these things. I think he... What I and, and maybe there was a time where players did that because there was such a difference between being a Cincinnati Bengal and a Dallas Cowboy or a Jacksonville Jaguar and a Dallas Cowboy. I think with social media and with the internet, I don't think that's as much of a difference as it used to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of these players are buying the notion of taking less to play for the Cowboys. They moved on from Amari Cooper a couple of years ago when, you know, he wanted big money there, so I don't know if Jerry's willing to do that. We're talking to Ross Tucker, our good buddy. Uh, you got to have a brief pit stop with the Cowboys. Uh, Larry Allen was there. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you give people a sense of the aura of Larry Allen with the Cowboys? Yeah, well, it's crazy because it was only my second year. It was 2002, and I got cut by Washington. I got claimed off of waivers the next day by the Cowboys, in part because Larry was hurt, I went there. And this is a guy, Dan, you know, I'm 23 years old. I had watched Larry the whole time I was in high school, the whole time I was in college, and now I'm out there, and he can't play. So I have to replace him. Mm. So at least the first game, maybe the first couple games, Dan, he was still trying to practice, so he was still listed as questionable. So I'm starting at left guard for the Dallas Cowboys in place of the injured Larry Allen. <laughs> Those first couple games, Dan, you have never seen guys so happy to see me in your whole life. <laughs> I mean, on, the other, on the other team. <laughs> Yeah, the D lineman. The D line. I came out of the huddle, and and all those guys for the Colts, certainly Henderson and Stroud for the Jaguars. They're like, oh thank God, oh thank God, it's this guy. I mean, it's not a good sign when you're a pro football player and your opponent is glad that it's you. Now, hey, I'm so glad you're here, Tuck. So glad you're here. I I remember, um, I remember Dan. We were going over bull rushes, okay. And how to counteract a bull rush. And most people know this, but a bull rush is when the defensive tackle or whoever just, just tries right. to run straight over you and through you. And I had just gotten there and and I didn't know. I mean, I, you know, Larry Allen didn't know me at all. And he's trying to help me. And he's like, Talk, you just gotta you just gotta stop and you just jam the guy and you punch him and you I said, Larry, you just stop and jam <laughs> the guy and punch him. I said, if Marcus Stroud tries to bull rush me, I will be hanging on for dear life. I, I will not be punching him and stopping him right there. What, what I appreciate the most, I think, about him, Dan, there's a lot of guys that have, you know, made the Hall of Fame. There's been a bunch of good players. What I adored about Larry and still do is he was trying to hurt people. And I don't, I don't mean injure. I don't mean injure. But he had the mentality out there that he was trying to physically punish people. He wanted to inflict pain. He wanted to smash you into mm. the ground. Mm. Not mm. all mm. offensive mm. linemen are like that. And I love that. Listen, you don't get to score touchdowns. People don't really know your name unless you screw up. Just like blocking a guy <laughs> isn't true. fun. If we're going to be 320 <laughs> pounds, the fun part is smashing the guy into the ground and feeling the breath go out of their body. What I loved about Larry is he was really trying to put people down. And I think that's one of the reasons why offensive linemen hold him in such high regard. I want you to tell me 
Yeah. And we have Tyler Smith, who's wearing his number, and he says he's going to wear it proudly and do it do it right. All right, good people. There's, uh, again, this is beginning of the dead zone as far as um, the off season. This is the six weeks before the storm begins. So it's the dog days of summer, and uh, we're going to try and get you through. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And don't forget, if you are a channel member, to go to the community tab. There's a link there if you are currently a channel member, not a subscriber, a channel member, um, to fill in the uh, information so that way we can end up sending you your football and your shot glasses and things like that. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And have a great blessed day. Peace.